What's up, y'all? I'm Tom, and this is Like a Math Class. In this video, we're going to talk about function transformations. Now, function transformations can often be very confusing for people. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and come up with various groupings of how you can organize the ideas of transformations in your own head or in your own notes. So that way you can come to a better understanding of what's happening with transformations. Let's get to it. To start with, we've got this general notation. Now this is going to work for any function. And when we say any function, we often write functions as y equals f of x. And all this is saying is, hey, I'm going to take some value and I'm going to multiply the function by this, or I'm going to add some value to the function, or I'm going to work with my x values inside the function. So let's break down these four things and see what they each do. We're going to start with our c and our d value, as you can see down here. We've got g of x defined as x squared. And what we want to do is we want to see what happens if we've got g of x minus 1 or g of x plus 2. Now this idea of substituting something into a function is covered in this video here, where you can see what a function is, what it means when we're substituting something in as a baseline as an introductory idea. What we're saying here is what well, we want to substitute x minus 1 into this function. So that's going to mean that for every time we see x, we need to substitute x minus 1. So we're going to look at x minus 1 squared. Over here, this one's a little bit different. This is saying I've got my function and I'm just going to add something onto the end of it. What that looks like is x squared plus 2. Now let's look at the graphs of these things so we can see what does this actually mean when we're considering these two different functions. So in this case, our g of x function, our baseline function x squared is, not is noted by these blue functions right here. So if we look at what happens here, we've got our y equals x squared or g of x equals x squared centering on the origin. What happened here is we've taken it, we've taken our value and we've moved over one unit to the right. So what this is actually doing when we graph this is you can see that this whole function itself is just shifted over one unit. So that means this C value, this C value is a horizontal shift. Now the interesting thing with this is when we've got X minus one, we're substituting in, we're saying that here, we're saying that C equals a positive one. So while it looks like we're saying X minus one, what we've done is we've actually substituted in a positive one into here. So this natural notation says B of X minus C. So a positive one gets substituted in here. So we have a value of X minus one, and it's going to be shifting to the right one unit. Now, if we said C was a negative two, then what we would have inside our parentheses is we would have G of X minus a negative two, which would be G of X plus two, and that would be moving left two units. So what you need to do is you need to think for yourself. You always need to think for yourself. But what you need to do is you need to think, okay, am I seeing what's being substituted into this function, a positive one or a negative two, and do I move the way that the sign goes? Or what you have to do is you have to look at the whole function and you say, have to say, okay, I'm putting, I've got X minus one, so I'm moving one unit to the right. I've got X plus two and I'm moving two units to the left. So you've got to think, how do I see it individually when you start, when you start piecing all of this together? Now over here, we've got G of X plus two. Again, our X squared is centered on the origin and now we're just going up two units. So this point that was zero, zero is now zero, two. So D is what we call a vertical shift. And if D is positive, then we're gonna shift up. And if D is negative, we're going to shift down. So D actually works exactly as you would expect it to. You're adding, you're just moving the whole function up. Now, before we move on to A and B, I wanna point out that here, we started at zero, zero, and we moved to the point one, zero. So what happened with this C is this is changing our X values, and it's changing by this one unit. Over here, again, we start at zero, zero, and now we move up to zero, two. So this vertical shift is only impacting 
our Y values. So you're gonna start seeing as we start exploring these a little bit more with our A values and our B values in this function notation that we're gonna to continue to just focus on just impacting our X or just impacting our Y. Here's our next function. F of X is equal to the square root of X. Now again, this blue function here, this is the graph of the square root of X. So what's happening here is we're taking this negative and we're multiplying this whole function by a negative. So what we're gonna end up with is a negative square root of X. And what that does is it reflects it across the X axis. This value here is represented by the A value. So if A is less than zero, we reflect across the X axis. So for example, here we've got the point four, two, and down here we have the mirrored point of four, negative two. So again, what's happened is we've changed the Y value. So even though it flips across the X axis, what we're actually doing is changing the Y value. Here's another version. We're still gonna consider F of X is equaling square root of X. Now this piece here is our B variable. And what this is doing is it's taking whatever our X value is and we're changing the value of it. After we graph the original function, we're then gonna change the value of X. So here's our original function once again, and here's our point that we looked at before. This here is four, two, right? And if you put four into your uh, square root function, you're gonna get an output of two. But if we have a negative X, then you're gonna see now that that is transformed over here to negative four, two. Here's where people really start to get tripped up. You're saying, wait a minute, I can't take the square root of a negative number. No, you can't. What you're doing is you're taking that original function and you're reflecting it across the Y axis. So it looks like the square root of negative X. What it's saying is, hey, we've got this function and now we want to reflect it. We want to bring it over to this other side. If B is less than zero or a negative value, then there is a reflection across the Y axis. So going back to our beginning, so here again with our A, if A is less than zero or a negative value, we, ref we reflect across the X axis. And here, if B is less than zero, we reflect across the Y axis. Before we get to the next examples, if you're finding value in this, go ahead and hit subscribe. So that way you can see when there's new videos posted and updated, and that way you can stay on top of your math studies. Let's get to the next examples. The next one is if we have our parent function of sine of x. Now, depending on where you are in your learning, you may not have come across the sine function yet. That's okay. We just wanna use that function because it can easily demonstrate what happens when we change the value of a. So what we're doing is we're multiplying the whole function by three. So what that would look like would be three sine of x. So we're taking this whole function and we're multiplying everything by three. And here you can observe this value right here is pi over two, that's our x value that you can see right down here, and our y value is one. But when we do the, the transformation, we go up to pi over two, three. So once again, our y values are being adjusted based on this a value, based on this thing being changed outside here. And you can even see it down here as well. Here we've got negative pi over two, negative one, and here we're gonna go to negative pi over two, negative three. So the same thing is happening all across here. And you can find any values along here that you're gonna see that they're all just changing by a multiple of three. So we say it's a stretch by a scale factor of A. So whatever A is, that's what we're changing, our Y values. Finally, here's our sine function again. Now it's gonna be sine of 2x. So what's happening here? Here's our original point. Again, pi over 2, 1. So now what's happening when we multiply by a value of b? This is our, this is our b value. So let's see, halfway between pi over 2 and 0, well that halfway would be pi over 4, right? If something divided by 2 in half, you're going to have that something divided by 4. So now we've got our, our new value at pi over 4, 1. So again, what's happened is we've changed our x value. And our x value has changed. It has stretched 
or sometimes we say compressed. If something gets smaller, we'll say compresses, and that goes the same with the A values as well. If it gets smaller, it's compressed by a scale factor of one over B. So whatever we have for our B, we're gonna do one over B, and that's gonna tell us how much this thing compresses or stretches. So if let's pretend that we had a B value, H of let's say one third X, which would be sine of one third X, then what we would do is we would multiply all of our X values by one over one third, which you know if you do your computations of that, that's gonna be a scale factor of three. So what would happen is we would take this value here and we would multiply this by three. So this point would move all the way out to the point three pi over two which we don't have on this graph. But what's happening is, is, again, it's multiplying by a scale factor of one over B. Here is our B value. Here is our B value. So one over B, this is our scale factor. To bring it back up here, A also has a vertical stretch by a scale factor of A. And B has a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of one over B. All right, so our B values and our A values. Now I said at the beginning, we're gonna look at ways that we can group these and how we can think about what's happening to these functions as we look at all functions, as we look at all anything that we can put these transformations on. So one way to look at it is anything that you're adding or subtracting is going to be shifts which means the whole function is just gonna move up and down or left and right. If you're multiplying values, those are going to be stretches or compressions or dilations, all different words to use to describe the same kind of thing, that they're getting stretched or they're getting stretched. Additionally, you can see anything that's happening inside the function, here's inside the function, here's inside the function, if our function's x squared, it's inside there. If we're looking at this inside the function, square root of x, here's inside the function, sine x, this is inside the function. Anything inside the function is gonna impact our x values. And if you notice also, again, depending on how you look at the x values, they're gonna kind of all do the opposite. If you think you're gonna be multiplying by a value of b, you're actually multiplying by one over b. Or if you're subtracting c, you're actually moving to the right, not the left. So it's, it's kind of backwards and everything outside the functions, A and D, those are all gonna be impacting your Y values. So those are all gonna be things that are gonna be vertical because our Y values are vertical. So it's gonna shift up and down or it's gonna stretch up and down. Again, our X values inside the function, it's either gonna stretch back and forth or it's gonna shift back and forth. So you've got a couple different ways that you can uh, classify this. And what I recommend that you do is you do just that. You take some notes and you kind of group this up and classify it in a way that makes sense to you. That's one of the most important things you, you can do when you're taking notes uh, with math is how does it look to you? What are you understanding? And then if you're not quite sure about it, have your teacher double check it, but have but put it into your own words. Make sure that you're doing it the way that your brain thinks. So I hope that was helpful, and if it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like the video, spread it across YouTube, and I'll see you in the next one.